What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video on this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful channel. I hope you're having a great, great day. My day was pretty good actually, yeah. My day was pretty good actually. So I hope your day is also being, um, I don't know, just great. And if not, I hope this video may make your day a little bit, a little tiny, just a tiny little bit better. Okay, so today we're watching before they were famous um the blackpink edition of it um i have to say i'm not the biggest fan of the show before they were famous um i've watched like i don't know five up to seven eight episodes of it and some i like but some are not as accurate and some are i don't know not the best ones some are a bit like sprinkled with hate at some points i don't know I, maybe it's just me but some episodes are good actually so um, yeah let's see how this episode works out if you want to support this channel leave a like right now and comment something down below I don't know what just anything that I should read because I'm reading all the comments and commenting uh, really helps the channel to get promoted on YouTube so um, if you want to support me comment something down below and also you can watch a lot of more videos right now on patreon if you want to support me there the link is down below in the description and yeah that's basically all guys i'm excited to watch the before they were famous episode of blackpink let's do it interested in k-pop right now it's surreal we're kind of moving along but we're like whoa where is this going so glad to be a part of it before blackpink would become the first female k-pop group to perform at coachella before blackpink would have over 2 million followers on twitter over 7.1 million followers on instagram more than 23 million subscribers Crazy, on youtube right? and more than 5 billion views with songs like playing with fire which is sitting at more than 373 million views as if it's your last racking up more than 568 million Million views and of course did it did it do with over 750 million views it's I crazy guys really just love to say the name of that song hi i'm jenny from blackpink hi i'm rose from blackpink <laughs> hi i'm lisa from blackpink <laughs> hi i'm jisoo jisoo Aww. jenny rose and lisa have become one of the biggest musical groups in the world well, as yeah. k-pop continues to make its way into the north american mainstream I have a feeling their star power will only continue to get brighter. But yeah. all of this didn't happen overnight. The girls were training rigorously over years and landing small gigs before ever getting a shot at the world stage. One of the members was even worried that she would never get her chance to debut. Can you guess which one it was? We'll get into all of that and their journey to stardom in this video. What's going on good people in the comment section? I hope you're having one heck of a day. My name is Jeremy okay. Hecht here for you on it Before They Were Famous. First of all, shout out to all the blinks out there and welcome if you're new to this channel. Be sure to subscribe for other bios on all types of he celebrities cool. and let us cool. know like who it. else we should cover in the comments down below. Okay. We've covered other groups in videos like BTS and members oh, of One Direction. So be sure to check those videos out okay. after you finish watching this okay. one. I spent will, a lot of will. time practicing names and words and places but I'm bound to say some things wrong. So if I pronounce anything incorrectly, I apologize okay. in advance. I didn't you can let say me know how I should have said it. Guys. And I know Blinks are hardcore fans. So if I missed any information or if you have some good stories about your favorite group, let me know in the comments down below. And for those of you asking, Michael didn't go anywhere. I'm just here to help out with the content. All right, now let's get into the show. He seems genuine, I like him. He seems like a true guy. Okay. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Jisoo Kim was born in Seoul, South Korea on January 3rd, 1995. True. She has an older brother and an older sister. She can speak Korean, Japanese, basic Chinese, and although she doesn't speak much English, she can understand it very well. So if you're watching this, Jisoo, what's up? In school, she was popular, but it wasn't just because of her looks or clothes. She was a kind person to her classmates. Everyone yeah. in her family likes to sing, so she was singing melodies from a young age. Jisoo would even dance and sing in front of her entire family during their gatherings. This made her want to perform oh, in front of cute. larger crowds. She can also play the drums and piano. In terms of her musical inspirations, she loves TVXQ. But her talents go beyond music, as she is a white belt in Taekwondo. Jisoo yeah. is a big Pokemon fan and has always loved Pikachu. She even oh, has a lot cool. of Pikachu merch. Apparently, she also loves telling dad jokes, too. I've been a big fan of Pika, and if you've ever watched the show, then you know I love a good dad joke. So, I feel like me and Jisoo have a connection. Apparently, <laughs> Jisoo doesn't know how to use scissors properly, but I guess it doesn't matter because in terms of the group, she made the cut. 
See what I did there? Yeah. 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 Okay, I'll go. But besides Pokemon goods, she doesn't like shopping because she never knows what to buy. And also she's also scared of heights. For fun, she likes to play with her dog named Dalgum, likes to play Overwatch, and read manga. She also likes to write in her diary as a form of stress release and has been doing so for about two to three years now. When she was old enough, she pursued that dream and auditioned for the YG Entertainment Trainee Program and was accepted in the summer of 2011. Jenny Kim, aka Human Gucci, was I'm born an only child guys. on January 16, 1996 in South Korea, but she moved to Auckland, New Zealand when she was just 10 years old to study abroad. When she was young, her nickname was Jerry, based on the show Tom and Jerry, and she was also called Manduki because of her cheeks. Apparently, they looked like dumplings, which yeah. in Korean they is do. Mandu. They do. She's fluent in Korean, Japanese, and English, and lived and studied in New Zealand at the ACG Parnell College. While attending school there, she was interviewed for a documentary that made her the first of the group to ever appear on TV. While Please. in New Zealand, she began to listen Show to K-pop music scene. and decided that she wanted to become a singer. Jenny learned how to play the piano <gasps> and the flute the she worked on her vocals, but she also studied more contemporary music like Lauren Hill and TLC. For fun, she's interested in photography, designer clothes, and also likes to hang out with her puppies, Kai and Kuma. Oh my oh! God! She had the plan to move to the US and told oh, her mom geez, that guys. she wanted to have a career in music. So. Jenny headed back to Korea and began to audition for musical roles. One of the places that she auditioned for was YG Entertainment. She signed on as a trainee in August of 2010. Rose, aka Blackpink's goddess, was born Roseanne Park on February 11, 1997 in Auckland, New Zealand, but was raised in Melbourne, Australia. Her mother was a businesswoman and her father was a lawyer, and she also has an older sister named Alice, who is also a lawyer now. But Rose was always interested in music, learning how to play the piano and guitar, and joining an Australian church choir when she was younger. It was in Melbourne that she okay. attended Centerburg Girls Secondary College and was also a cheerleader at one point. In terms of her musical influence, she really looks up to Gummy. She also cites Malibu Nights by the band Laney as an inspiration. I wish I could be able to listen to a song and be able to find the chords for it and just play it like on the spot. She has no dogs, but she does have a pet fish named True. Orange. She hates avocados because of their mushy texture. I completely agree, but I do like guacamole. It's just a better texture. For fun, she likes to play guitar, draw, and ride her bike. Eventually, Rose moved to South Korea to chase after her dreams of becoming a professional singer. And her dreams weren't just some far off plan. She was working for them, but it was actually her father who booked her a ticket to the city where the audition for YG yeah, Entertainment crazy. was being held. In an interview, she said, I used to live in Australia. It was a rural neighborhood rather than a metropolis. So I stayed home playing the piano or the guitar and singing. My dad noticed that I liked music, so he took me to the audition. Before I That's auditioned, crazy. music had been a hobby, but once I came to Korea and I'm realized so where happy I that stand it worked in terms out, of like, skills, I became more passionate and competitive about it. Great. But it was no easy task to successfully make it through those auditions. The odds of actually also making true. it through were allegedly 700 to 1. But after getting to the audition, she was that one. She signed on with YG Entertainment in May of 2012. Lisa, aka the Thailand Princess, was oh, born to Lisa, Lisa Minoban as an only child on oh, March 27, 1997 guy. in Bangkok, Thailand, and is the youngest member of the group. Originally, yes. her name was Pran Priya, and her friends called her Pak Pak, but after getting a fortune telling, she changed her name to Lalisa, which means the one who is praised. She attended Praffamantri 2 Damn, school. So her stepfather, Marco Bruchweiler, is a top certified Swiss chef in Thailand, but apparently, it didn't get passed down because everyone in the group says that Jenny is the best cook. Instead, Lisa was interested in dancing ever since she was young. When her mom saw how good she was, she enrolled her in dance classes. She wanted to sing too, so she practiced, but oh, she it was Lisa's rapping though. ability that set her apart. Looking up to American rappers like Tyga because of their swag, she learned how to flow over beats. Lisa moved to Seattle in middle school. She's childhood friends with GOT7's Bam Bam, and the two Ooh. dance together in the same crew called Weeza Cool. While Lisa doesn't have any dogs or goldfish, she does have two cats named Leo and Luca. In 2010, Lisa passed her the audition pretty good, for YG actually. Entertainment and signed on as a trainee in April of 2011. Although now she can speak English, Japanese, Thai, basic Chinese, and Korean, she admitted that she barely spoke any Korean when she first started, so she had to take Korean classes every yeah. day. 
She thanks the other members so of the group for, for helping her learn the language. All right, so now that you know the girls, let's take a look at how they all came together as a group. In 2010, massively successful Korean music exec Yang Yun Suk I hope I'm pronouncing that right, revealed that he was putting together a girl group. For those of you who don't know much about the YG Entertainment Group, first of all, it's not owned by the rapper from LA, and second of all, it's sort of like a boot camp for superstars. Yeah. For aspiring artists True. who are lucky enough to be handpicked for the trainee program, their work is only beginning. They are trained in performance, song structure, dancing, in singing, everything. in every aspect of becoming a superstar. Yeah. And it's not just like an after school program. You train for 12 hours a day and in X Factor like it competition, you're performing hard, alongside 10 to 20 other aspiring That's artists. So and not everyone them. would get to stay. Some artists would be sent home if they weren't performing up to yeah. par. In a way, it's like a label because you are under the company's umbrella. But on the other hand, they focus heavily on artist development, a lot more than most American labels do today. So, after all four of the girls were signed, they each began to get their chance at exposure through commercials, guest appearances on songs, and other opportunities to show their skill set. But like in baseball, it's up to you to perform in the minor leagues to get your shot at a debut in the MLB. For Blackprint, when they all arrived separately, each of the group's members began to build their own portfolio. Jisoo had been working hard on her craft for a long time, spending five years training with YG Entertainment. Crazy. She was also scouted by an agent at a competitor, SM Entertainment, while ironically attending a YG Entertainment concert, but turned down the offer as she had already accepted a deal with YG. During her training Good days, for Jisoo us, became guys. close Imagine. friends with Nyon from the group Twice and Sulgi from the group Red Velvet. Jisoo appeared in commercials with actor Lee Min Ho and was even featured in music videos for Epic High's songs Spoiler and Happy Ending. Yeah. She appeared in his high ends I'm Different. She had a cameo on KBS's The Producers. She was an MC for SBS in Kagayo's Super Concert and in commercials for Nikon and the LG Stylus 2. When she appeared on the Korean series Running Man, she helped boost their ratings to an all-time high. Jenny says Damn. that for her, the training was stricter than school. When Jisoo met Jenny, she thought she was very stylish, but Jenny was a little bit more skeptical. She thought that Jisoo didn't know what she was doing. But it only took a day before she was proven wrong and says her talent shined through pretty clearly. In fact, Jenny said that when she heard Jisoo's ability to harmonize, she was blown away, telling Billboard, Jisoo would be the quiet one, but then she'd be like, how about this? She'd make this harmony and we were like, that's so good. She'd stay quiet and act like nothing happened. Yeah, that's, and then that's, in an hour, she'd say, how about Jisoo. this? And she'd it have is. another amazing harmony. Even to this day, I'm like, I can't find the harmony. Jisoo, what is it? Jenny starred in the music video for G Dragon's song that XX and was featured in Lehigh's special and Big Bang Soon Glee's GGB. She also acted in Sprite and Beer commercials and became a regular cast member on the show Village Survival The Eight. When Rose began training, oh, yeah, she would yeah, call true. her parents crying because of the rigorous schedule and high expectations. Rose said that at first she was a little bit confused as to oh, yeah, what she should be Rose doing with YG. Rose. So the other members gave her tips and helped usher her in. When she first arrived, the four of them all bonded together over an all night jam session. She trained for four years and two months and worked tirelessly on her craft. She was a contestant on the King of Mass Singer, which was actually the inspiration for Fox's show, Mass Singer. On the show, she made it past the first round but got eliminated in the next one, losing by just one vote. She also collaborated with G-Dragon for their song Without You, but yeah. since her name wasn't listed on the song when the album dropped, she still remained relatively unknown. Rose had the shortest period of training and was announced as the final member of Blackpink. In 2012, YG released a video of Lisa dancing without giving her name out and fans were excited about her potential. Lisa trained for five years and three months, starting in middle school. She plays the ukulele and learned how to play guitar after Rose taught her during their training days. She also appeared in Big Bang Taiyang's Ring a Ling a music video as a cast member on the show Real Men 300 and in ads for the fashion brand Nona Gone. Lisa described the training process to Billboard as, they, they all tried they rapping, like we all tried so singing, much. we all tried different kinds of styles and performances, so we naturally found our perfect spot. She said that there were a lot of trainees coming in and out of the program, but one by one those artists left, and it ended up just being the four members of the group. Once yeah. Lisa was officially announced as a part of the group, 
her parents were so happy for her to see her six year journey finally become worth it. The group of four girls was paired with producer Teddy Park, who's a rapper, oh, songwriter, Teddy and Park record producer who's been signed to YG Entertainment since he flew out to South Korea during a summer vacation with his friend when they were just 17 years old. Since then, he's been a part of some massive hits, but perhaps none bigger than the ones he's produced and written with Blackpink. But not all of the members were confident that they would break through and debut. Jenny admitted that she was terrified her shot would never come. And there's the answer to your question from the beginning of the video. She was wrong. The shot came and it came in a bigger way than any of the girls could have like, imagined. Unbelievable. In June babe. of 2016, Blackprint debuted for the first time as a group, becoming the first girl group to debut under YG Entertainment in six years. And the reception, well, let's just say it was pretty good. Their first two singles charted at number one and two on the Billboard World Digital Crazy. Song Charts, becoming the fastest act to do so. Blackpink yeah. signed a record deal with Interscope Records, who is now a creative and business partner to YG Entertainment. The group became the highest charting female K-pop group, landing at number 55 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, did it, did it do, and number 40 on the so Billboard happy, 200 guys. album so chart with their EP Square Up. They made their US television like debut anytime on The Late I Show with Stephen like Colbert on February 12th. As for the future, the group plans to release a new album together and continue touring for their blinks all around the world. And the individual members will also be dropping solo work as each member is set to drop individual music. Jenny told Billboard, we all had to know how to perform on our own, that's always been there. And with their success, the group has given back a lot to their communities. In early April of 2019, each of the four members donated 10 million won to the Hope Bridge Association of the Damn. National Disaster Relief for victims of the Sokcho wildfire in South Korea. Jenny said to The Hollywood Reporter, It's such an honor to be receiving so much love, and we never want to take this moment for granted. We feel very blessed, and we hope to see you guys soon. But as for the rest of the story, well, you know it because this is before they were famous. My name is Jeremy Hecht. You can follow me on Instagram. That was a good at episode, Jeremy guys. Okay. And let me know what you thought. Actually, it was a good video. It was a good video. Like, I I believe I knew most of the stuff, but it was still really informative. He was polite. He tried uh, his best to pronounce everything correct. And it was a good video. Actually, it was a good video. We need to watch the before they were famous for BTS. But um, I really want to get into the BT, uh, BTS content a bit later because right now we need to catch up on the blackpink stuff guys because we missed some stuff and i missed them guys i missed them so we need to get into some blackpink videos again i thought and um, yeah it was actually a good video maybe a bit long and most of the information i knew already obviously but it was still cool to hear their story again and i don't know to get all excited again because i'm so happy for them yeah it was a good video, Edzo. I liked it. Leave your, um, like, I don't know, opinion about it down below in the comment section, guys. And yeah, see you soon. Have a great day.